Hello, and welcome. The Discord server has spoken. I've decided to make a tutorial series on Rust game development. This series is going to go through sort of three main phases. The first phase will be an introduction to the Rust language itself, and then we'll have an um, introduction to Rust plus SDL2, simple direct media layer, and then we'll be doing Rust, SDL2, and OpenGL all together. The reason I decided to make this tutorial is I looked online and bindings exist for SDL2 and OpenGL, but documentation is not that great, so I hope that I can sort of make something which is useful for you guys. Now, what is Rust? Rust is pretty much like C++, so it's a systems level language with a higher emphasis on safety. So unfortunately, you're not going to have any of those fun segmentation faults that you usually get when you try to access null pointers and things like that. A lot of the features of Rust are um, built towards checking the code so that errors are caught by the compiler and best practice, oh, sorry, not the compiler, errors are caught by the linter before it hits the compiler and best practices are more strictly enforced, which is actually really good. Resources that we can use to follow along with this tutorial series, there is something called the Rust book. Side note, you might be looking at this and saying, hey, Rust? Aren't you doing metal? Isn't that a conflict of interest? Well, Rust is actually named after a fungus, not the oxidized metal, you know? So, separate things. Ha ha ha. Okay, so uh, if we go to this Rust programming language, this is a pretty good guide, and I'm... A lot of the early videos in the series are going to be sort of sticking to these chapters. Not 100%, but, you know, I'm teaching a language I can't be that original in the early chapters. There's basics that we're going to have to cover no matter what. And this is a great place to look up and get more resource, resources on that. Okay, in terms of learning SDL, this uh, Lazy Foo Productions is really high quality tutorial series. We will not be touching on all of these, but if you want to have a bit more of a background into SDL, and you want to understand the underlying stuff, this is all written in C++. Um, and yeah, we'll be going through SDL2 topics as well. Now, in terms of OpenGL, this series is not primarily a learn OpenGL course. I have plenty of series on that already. I don't want to do the, the colored triangle forever, but I will be sort of, I can't help but talk about things as they come up. So we'll have that too. Now, let's get started. The first thing we'll need to do is install Rust, of course, unless we have it already. So we can go here and go to install. This is rustlang.org. And if we have Linux or Mac OS, it will be this instruction down here. If we have Windows, it's one of these, probably the 64-bit version. So we click that, download it, and run it. Why not? Let's do it now. I've already done it. Okay, so I can see down here I have this rust up in it. I can just click here and it runs it. Okay, it will install it here. That's great. Okay, so there are sort of three main tools which are installed in the tool chain. We have Cargo, Rust C, and Rust Up. Now, Rust Up runs the whole show, it does the upgrades, the uninstalls, the installs, all of that. Rust C is kind of like GCC. It does the compiling and all of that. Cargo is somewhere between Python's pip and a make file, if that makes sense. So Cargo is, or, or NP, NPM, actually, yeah. Cargo is just like NPM. It is responsible for building projects, making projects and all that. It's also responsible for handling imports. But anyway, so let's just go here. One, to proceed with installation. Okay, and now here we have some little notes. We might want to keep track of this. By the way, up the top, it says, it gives us this um, 
path. This is super important. C uses your name. It's important. Okay. Hit enter to continue. I guess that worked. Okay. So now let's get into it. So we'll just, um, let me just make a new folder. The tried and true. Hello. Okay. So we can just open this up with code. You can use any system you want. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. And something which is really important. Actually, let me just make a new file. So we'll just go main.rust source. Whatever. Rust. Okay. And this is really important. If we go here to extensions and search for Rust. I mean, you can code in a text file if you want, but if you're coding in VS Code, you probably want a linter. And this Rust analyzer is probably the best tool for uh, analyzing the code and catching errors and things. Okay, so let's actually get things started. We'll make a uh, function, call it main, and we'll go print line exclamation mark. Hello world. Okay. That's good. Now um, we need this exclamation mark because this print line function is actually sort of a macro and this is just how the internals work. So if we get rid of this, you know what, let's run it without that. See what happens. Okay. We'll go make a new terminal. And we're in our current folder. We'll send an instruction to Rust C, and we'll say Rust C main it says error. Ooh, yeah, good one, good one, Rust C. You caught my caught my error. Yeah. So see, it says this print thing is a macro, and we need an exclamation mark here. So it sort of tells us, yeah, we can go for, for more information about this error. Write that, that's fine. We can just, there we go. Give this another shot. Yep, okay. So that has worked. And we have this main.exe. So we can go dot, so in the current folder, run main.exe. It does what we expect. Okay, so this is fine. This is fine. But if we're making a more complicated project, there is a more comprehensive way of working with these. And that is with the cargo system. So like I said, th these first few videos, they're not going to be super original. But what we can do is just open up any sort of terminal, it could be anything at all, and just go, okay, cargo new, hello to. Okay, so we've got this folder in here. It's made this for us. We can open this up. And we have a few things. We have this source folder with a function ready to go for us. We have this target and this target will hold our build when we make it. Git ignore is specifying the folders and files which we want to ignore if we were to add this to a GitHub repo. So at the moment it's saying, hey, don't add anything in the target. So don't add the builds, just the source code and etc. And that's fine. Cargo lock, okay, that's fine. And this cargo.toml. Now this defines any dependencies or, or anything really. So if we want to work with this, see here we have main.rs, okay. We can go cargo run, and it sort of sniffs through there, looks for main, and makes it. And we can also go cargo build, and that'll just build it. And if we want to build this in release mode, we can go cargo build release. And that makes it as well. So then if we look over in target, we have a bunch of these. We have debug and in debug, we have hello2.exe. 
and then we have release and in release we have hello2.exe. So as you can see, Rust always bounces it down to exe files, raw ones and zeros. Okay. I know, all very exciting, right? Well, let's, let's have a little preview. Let's have a look at something a little different. Okay, so just as an example, because I know it's been pretty straightforward, pretty dry so far, let's get into something which might be useful, which is, let's see if we can get SDL working. Um, so we'll go make a new project, cargo new, hello SDL. Okay, now let's just go to the TOML file and I'll just add a dependency, SDL2. If we want to not worry about versions and just have the latest version of SDL2, we just put an asterisk there. Now, we have this generic file here. You know what? Let's just see if this runs. So we'll go new terminal. Okay. Seems to work with no problem. Let me see if we can push it a little bit more because it shouldn't be running is basically what I'm, what I'm getting at. Okay, so I'll be going through this in more detail at a later point in the series. I'm just trying to get some sort of STL specific code here because at the moment it says okay, but it sort of shouldn't be saying okay. Now, this warns us that a variable is not being used. We can actually prefix it with an underscore to get rid of that warning. Now, let's try running this again and hope it throws an error. Yeah, throws an error. So by default, although cargo can define dependencies and does sort of do a little bit of work to download them doesn't sort of work that way for every dependency so here's how we can go through and get sdl okay so the first thing we do is we go to download sdl over here and we want it to be a development library and there are different instructions depending on which you have, I'll actually link that in the video description. I'm gonna use the visual C. So we'll download this library here, and then we unzip it, and we have this folder here. And what we wanna do, there's sort of a few different things. Where are we? Okay, that's fine, we can leave that. We're going to lib x64. We've got these, and these are really important. So I'll just grab all of them. So these are the 64-bit libraries. These lib files we need to send to Rust and this lib to SD, uh, DLL we need to send to our program. So we go to C, users, our name, and then there is, where is it? This Rust up. So we go into Rust up and then tool chains. There's only one folder here. So we're sort of just sniffing through Rust lib, and then here, Microsoft Visual C, and then lib, we paste it here. Okay, so the lib files stay here, and then the SDL2, we can sort of cut that, and that DLL goes into the base folder of our project at the same level as our .toml. So now we've got all of that, we can try that again and it works. There we have SDL. So it's been a little bit rambly, but hopefully this has been useful for you. In future videos in this series, we're going to sort of progress and learn features of the Rust language. So sort of learn how this stuff is working. All right, hope you had fun and I'll see you again soon. Bye.